So here we have our tripod. The bottom of the tripod we have a velcro tape that we're going to undo to allow the legs to freely move out. And we're going to take the three legs and move them in a tripod uh, manner so that they're roughly on the circumference of a size circle that's about one meter apart. If we're on soft ground and even if we're on hard down, we'd use our heel to press each of the legs firmly into the ground. So even on hard ground, we would, we would do this to ensure that the spikes won't actually move. Then with each of the clips, undo the three clips, raise the tripod up to a height that is approximately neck level. The idea is that we want the tripod, or when we put an instrument on the tripod, that it's going to be easy for us to look through at eye level. And here as well, because we've got a bullseye level in the top of the tripod, I'm going to try and ensure that the top the tripod is also level. Once our tripod is set up on its level we're going to take the level from the box and we're going to offer it up and tighten it down using the nut that's in the tripod offering it up into the thread that's in the base of the level and we're going to tighten it up. We're going to tighten the nut uh, finger tight we don't need to over tighten it because that will only break the uh, potentially break the knot or the threads. Just do it finger tight, and that won't. That's sufficient not to allow the level to actually move. Next thing is to get the level instrument itself flat or horizontal. Inside, on the instrument itself, there is another bullseye level. And what we have to ensure is that the bubble is within the circle. Looking down on top can be quite hard. So on this level, we have a little mirror that we can angle at 45 degrees so that we can look in directly at without having to uh, stand on our tippy toes. And the idea or the principle is we're going to use two adjustment screws to bring the bubble and uh, align it up with the level and then use the single adjustment screw that we already have and used to bring the bubble to within the actual circle. So here you can see the bubble isn't within the circle so we're going to use two adjustment screws, pick any two, but we're going to work with these together so either we're going to screw them in together or out together with our thumbs so that you can get the bubble to align up with the circle as you can see. Then using the single adjustment screw that you already have and used, you're going to use that to bring the bubble back into the center for the bullseye. And bring that back and forth with a single one. A little fine adjust on these two together to bring it back and we have it then perfectly in the center. This is our level and to describe the parts of it we have an eyepiece focus to look through here. At the other end we have our lens so that's where you're actually going to be looking out through. There's an adjustment on the eyepiece for crosshairs, we'll talk about that. To focus at objects at distance we're going to use this distance focus back and forth so whilst looking through the eyepiece you can bring the staff or whatever item you're looking at into focus using this one. We have also another adjustment knob here which is a horizontal adjust. So when we're doing the level, it will move the, the level back and forth horizontally by small amounts so that you'll be able to get the crosshairs onto the staff. Around here we already have our bullseye level and little mirror so we can get the instrument uh, totally horizontal and on top we've got two sites we've got a single spike and two double spikes we'll talk about that whenever we're setting up and targeting 
hard level at a distance. So first thing I'm going to do is to adjust so that we can see the crosshairs that we view through the eyepiece. So looking through the eye, looking through the eyepiece, you'll see a number of crosshairs. I'm going to use the adjustment ring on the eyepiece to bring the crosshairs into focus sharply. So adjusting back and forth whilst you're looking through it. So that the crosshairs are nice and sharp uh, whilst holding an A4 page in front of it. And it is the centre of these crosshairs we're going to use with the level to take a reading. So now we're going to try and take a reading. You can see I have a staff propped at a distance. And we're going to then take the level. On top of the level we have two sights. We have one here and another one here. So before you start to look through the eyepiece, what I want to do is to line the level up with the staff that's located at a distance. So you can see here, what I'm going to do is I want to try and get the first sight sitting in between the two sights and pointing in the direction we want to look. So that's the sight, the single sight sitting in between the two double sights. However, what we're going to do is we're going to turn that round so that it is now sitting, the single sight is sitting in between the double sight and also pointing towards the staff that's located at a distance. Now when we look through the eyepiece we should be able to see the staff and with a distance focus we can bring it into our field of view. Now looking through the eyepiece we can see our crosshairs nice and sharp and using the distance focus knob, I'm going to bring the staff that's at a distance into focus within our field of view. So there you can see the staff. However, where it's currently located, we, the crosshairs in the centre is slightly off the staff. So I'm going to use the horizontal adjustment screws to bring the staff, the crosshairs, onto the measurement staff. Then with the horizontal crosshairs, vertical crosshairs, we can then take a reading. In this case our reading would be 1.523. So when holding the staff, you're going to hold your staff with the hand. Careful to keep your fingers off the face of the staff because you don't want to obscure any of the readings that are taken if you hold it like this. So hold it with one hand, fingers to your side to leave, to leave the face of the staff free so that the person with the level can take any readings. On the back you can see that there is a little bubble level so the person holding the staff has to ensure that the bubble is within the circle to ensure that the staff is actually vertical. To open or close the staff, on the back of the staff itself is a little button. So you press that in and the staff itself will collapse down. Likewise, when you're taking readings, extend out the staff and you will hear a click whenever the staff is fully extended and then you can level it up with the bubble so that a reading can be taken. You shouldn't need to do more than one extension for the readings that we're going to do in our exercise.